All right, recording has started, and this is the April 21st, 2022 Cross Plain Community Meeting. Uh, folks are still filtering in, but I think we've got a decent quorum going here. Uh, so and let me fix this here for, for Stephen. All right, so let's, uh, let's jump on into it here. We are in the middle, uh, or towards the end, I guess, the back half of the 1.8 release cycle. Um, I just checked before this meeting on if there had been any recent releases uh, of, of Crossplane specifically, like patch releases since the last community meeting. There have not that I'm aware of. Uh, so if you don't have any, uh, so recent releases is NA right now. Um, 1.8, the scheduled release date is May 17th. Uh, I had been saying previously in, in uh, previous community meetings that that was uh, maybe something we wanted to bump up uh, because it's in the during KubeCon. Um, but actually, when I kind of revisited the schedule, uh, the conference, like the main conference part uh, after like the co-located events and zero day events and stuff doesn't start until the day after that till May 18th. So um, I'm actually totally fine with just leaving the release date as scheduled as advertised on the typical cadence. And then, um, you know, I don't expect much development work, uh, like, you know, the last minute there, because we have, you know, code freezes and feature freezes in place. So I'm totally fine with actually just leaving the release date as scheduled for May 17th. Um, let me know if anybody has major objections to that, but I think that should work out uh, just fine. Uh, so 1.8, let's go ahead and do a quick update on some of the uh, functionality there that we're working on. Uh, so I know that there is a couple a couple of things that I wanted to call out. Uh, one is that I believe Sergen has a, uh, a pull request in play right now that's being currently reviewed that uh, unblocks a couple of scenarios around um, around references and when they are resolved and also like self-referential uh, type of things also. So I have to believe a surrogate's pull request uh, addresses both of those issues, which will unblock, I think, a number of folks. Uh, so that's going to be really useful in 1.8. Um, let me know, Sergey, if there's any like major obstacles with that PR, but I think it was on a good trajectory, at least, uh, in being included in 1.8. Um, yes. Awesome. And then there is a design proposal as well as a uh, parallel pull request uh, to, that would address a long standing issue around being able to pull in data and basically patch your compositions from uh, common data sources such as config maps, etc. Um, I think that that is going in a pretty good direction. Uh, but I, and I think that some things are being uh, figured out on that one and some consensus is being reached but I don't have a great read on how much is left in that. Um, so if anybody who's been involved in, in that PR there uh, can, can speak to that, that would, that would be helpful. But um, it looks like there's good progress in that one. And I would love to see that one in 1.8. Uh, I don't know if Hassan is on tonight. Uh, I don't know, I think, no, I don't see Hassan. Um, but uh, he had been doing some work on uh, the designs uh, and proposal for having uh, you know, pluggable uh, external secret stores. We have support right now entry for uh, writing secrets and credentials and sensitive information to Vault, uh, as well as Kubernetes secrets. Um, and there's a proposal here of how we can continue to extend that uh, and enable community contributions there more easily by being able to do those out of the core crossplane tree and un un decoupled from core crossplane releases, et cetera. Um, and then another big thing here that's being uh, actively worked on, pretty pretty hardcore, uh, which we'll get into more details in a specific update later on, is custom compositions. So those are the major 1.8 things that I know of are in play. Uh, there's been a couple of things that have already been merged and, and accepted, uh, so will definitely be included in the 1.8 release. Uh, but that's the most of the stuff that I know of that's going on in 1.8. Does anybody want to call out or add any other uh designs or features functionality etc that uh, we expect to be included in 1.8 all right um one thing that came in i, I don't see it on the board because i don't think it was planned but uh, we had an outside contributor well we had a contributor uh put in a base 64 encoding for compositions which will help with some uh, provisioning of ET ec2 instances 
So that was just yeah, and I think I think we got that one. I added that to the board just today, uh, Stephen, uh, for cool. for here. I think that's this one in the done column, I believe. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Yep. Yeah, and was that Bob? I think. Uh, I think yes, Bob's that was. On the call here. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. That was cool to see that, Bob. And I know you've been doing a lot of work in uh, provider Terraform as well. Uh, so it's cool to see you here. Thank you. Right on, right on. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, so 1.8 is proceeding as planned. Uh, I think we still need to get into the details around custom compositions, uh, but um, proceeding towards a scheduled release on May 17th. All right, let's get into some provider updates as well. Uh, I know Moaf is not uh, able to make it tonight, um, but there are some updates on the TerraJet project and uh, you know, the Jet-based uh, providers as well. Um, this is uh, something I believe that Alper was driving, and I think it's actually quite quite impactful as well. Alper, do you want to give us a quick update and explanation of the um, of the shared uh, runtime uh, for the Jet providers? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we had been experimenting with, uh, you know, introducing support for uh, running the native provider, as we call it, uh, the native Terraform provider uh, once and, uh, you know, having the requests done by the Terraform CLI uh, handled by that single shared instance. So basically, how Terraform normally does this is when it needs to make a request to the native provider, it forks it itself. And, you know, after it gets the response, uh, the forked process for the uh, native provider, you know, is stopped. And, you know, another request results in another fork of the native provider. So this is, uh, as you would imagine, uh, quite inefficient. Uh, and, you know, when we are reconciling, you know, multiple managed resources, this also means that multiple instances or multiple processes are running uh, in addition to the Terraform CLI processes running. So, uh, we had long ago experimented with this idea and uh, we had something already working. Uh, and right now we have introduced this support uh, to the big three providers. Uh, provider Jet GCP support has already been merged and you know, Provider Jet Azure and Provider Jet AWS uh, PRs are under review. Uh, so we should... Uh, be able to get them merged pretty soon. Uh, and, you know, we have already done some experiments measuring any performance improvements uh, regarding this. Uh, the effect is, uh, you know, mostly reduced uh, CPU consumption and memory consumption uh, with this shared gRPC server approach in JET-based providers. And one more thing that I could add is we are introducing, we are rolling this support initially to the big three providers, namely Azure GCP and uh, AWS. Uh, but, you know, other Terraform-based providers can also optionally use this shared gRPC server approach. Thank you. Awesome, Alper. Thanks for that update on that, and thanks for driving the benefits of this architectural change into uh, the major providers as well. Um, so definitely happy to see that in the, the being included in upcoming releases. So great stuff. Um, and then there's another update here around uh, missing status fields. Uh, and so it looks like uh, the type builder is getting updated to make sure that, that uh, those get fixed or those will be included there. Um, I don't. I don't super remember this one well myself. Uh, is this so again, this something you're driving and something that will be included in uh, the, the jet providers soon? Yes, I am working on this one. It also contains uh, the refactoring in the uh, TerraJet Builder site and also addresses the uh, nested steps field issue. And it's actually in review for now. So yeah. So oh, Jared, oh, this one is about Yuri's issue, uh, 
about you know missing yep. identity field that we yes yeah exactly channel so yeah i remember a number of people oh, sorry for cutting off okay, continue alper uh, sorry so sagan is also tackling uh, with this in the refactoring pr he's working on awesome Yep, I, I remember that uh, a couple of folks doing, uh, you know, jet-based provider development work or, you know, using them out in the field had run into issues that seem to be stemming from this as a root cause, uh, some of the stuff that's being addressed in this PR. So that's super helpful. Uh, so that's good that there's progress being made on this. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, okay, cool, 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 cool. So uh, there's been a couple, uh, or at least one, at least it's called out here, of uh, there's new providers all the time <laughs> that seem to be cropping up in the ecosystem now, which is awesome. Uh, and then there is uh, a first official release of uh, Provider Kafka, uh, which has supports for both topics and then ACLs as well in its initial release. Uh, so a lot, of the, a lot of folks have been contributing to this and, uh, and driving the, the effort here. So this 1.0 release uh, has been through a lot of discussion, a lot of uh, development work, um, and you know it's well tested, et cetera. So uh, I'm feeling really good about this uh, first provider release and it's available and out now, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, there's also a provider pager duty release that, uh, like Christopher, you're on the call, I think, right? And so that is now published. I think you had finished the work, like the functionality uh, a while ago, but now it's published. Yes, we published this. Thanks for um, setting up the variables, etc. Right, right on. Cool. So yeah, so it sounds like that's uh, folks in the community are finding that valuable and uh, you know wanting it to be publicly like a art of release artifacts available to you. So obviously somebody's adopting it, and that's a good thing to see. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Christopher, maybe if you uh, if if you can think of um, following up to add a link to that first release of PagerDuty, uh, then we can uh, have that yep. in this list as well. Awesome. Uh, Page, but then Page before, Page. probably. Oh yes, Dan. Sorry. I am so sorry to jump in, but I had the drop, and I just wanted to just ten seconds, really quick, reference an issue that's down at the bottom of the doc uh, because Jesse uh, wasn't able to make it, uh, so I told him I'd speak on his behalf. Um, yeah, sure. This is for, Absolutely, Dan. Uh, integrating uh, cosine uh, signature validation into the package manager. Uh, this is definitely um, something we're excited about and a uh, big, big fan of the folks who work on cosine. Essentially, we would uh, make it a setting, I believe, for you to um, be able to verify that the image you pulled is signed correctly and that sort of thing. Um, I think we might take kind of like a, a small like SIG or working group uh, development approach to this uh, for folks that are uh, have expressed interest. Um, so just wanted to encourage anyone who's interested in this functionality, uh, drop your use case or your name or say I'm interested on the issue, um, and we'll work on organizing some some meetings and stuff around that. Sorry for jumping in there. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely, Dan. That's great that we got to address this. Uh, so thanks for bringing that up. And I know that you would be a, a probably a major driver of, of the thinking around that type of functionality. So thank you for that work and effort. Cool. All right, everybody. Uh, yep. And then Christopher got a chance to go ahead and add the link to the first PagerDuty uh, official artif artifact release. Uh, and then Christopher, we'll top back to you now for some uh, updates on provider AWS, uh, because I know this is a, a big thing as well. I think that was actually contributed by Jesse uh, also. Yes. So Jesse's name keeps popping up. <laughs> yeah, Jesse contributed this. And I think also um, Steve was on it, Steven. Um, yeah, um, it is now possible with provider AWS to assume, assume web identity roles um, with provider config. So not only roles, uh, but can now use um, the web identity roles assuming. And yeah, we test this also in our environments. Um, so with more than 50 AWS accounts uh, in place and this works quite well. So we're testing this now in our environments since six days, I think. Everything is working as expected and much more or better from a security perspective than the old or the other implementation with uh, only uh, assuming the roles. Awesome, yeah, fantastic. Uh, I was definitely glad to see this contribution here. So thanks, Jesse, for that, and Stephen for stewarding it and helping out with that as well, and, and Christopher for, for verifying and testing and, and, and getting good feedback on it also. Uh, so that's a great functionality to have. And then now, so there was uh, a release of provider AWS, uh, I think what just yesterday, right? The 26.1 release, was this included in that or this that's gonna be in 20.27? 20 
Yeah, so 0.26.1 is a bug fix release that doesn't include the assume web identity support. Uh, it contains a fix regarding uh, cloud front distribution resources uh, in working scenarios. So it doesn't contain any new functionality. Got it. Thanks for clarifying that, Alper. I was uh, I forgot what was included exactly in twenty six point one. So yeah, I think that was a fix from Esgi uh, to fix that cloud fund distribution uh, yeah. logic there. So that's great. Okay, and it makes total sense. Then uh, I'm very much in support of having the web identity auth stuff. Uh, you know, get a little bit of bake time in in the main branch and then go out with the major the next uh, next full release as opposed to being backported for a patch. Sweet. Okay. Good. 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 Uh, anything else to add on Provider AWS? Uh, I don't see updates for Azure or GCP, so I'll open the floor for anything from Provider AWS, Azure, and GCP all at once. Nothing from my side. Cool. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's all the updates then on progress for Crosswind 1.8 uh, for the uh, JET-based providers, uh, for providers in general. So I think we can go ahead and move on then to the community topics and questions uh, in this section here. Uh, and I see Sergen's gone ahead and added some stuff for custom compositions. So when we get there, we'll have something to talk about. Thank you, Sergen. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention here uh, is in recent uh, announcements and content and blog posts and everything like that is that I think, was this just yesterday? I think it might've been just yesterday uh, that the both in GitHub stars for the CrossFit project and also Slack members, uh, both of those crossed 5,000 yesterday, um, or we announced it yesterday at least. So uh, that's something that definitely a big milestone that the community continues to grow. It's continuing to accelerate as well. Uh, and then, you know, a huge thank you to everybody in the community that helps specifically with, uh, you know, all the Slack uh, discussion and, you know, troubleshooting and all that sort of stuff. So there's obviously a super busy community. People are asking questions, people are, are getting help and, you know, people are answering. Uh, questions and providing that help as well. So thank you to everybody who's contributing to that and helping out with that. That's been really, really helpful and continues to make the community really good. Uh, then Victor has uh, another uh, another video here around using GitOps, uh, GitOps with Crossplane and then Flux specifically. Uh, I think that's a more recent video. Uh, you can click that here to go and watch that. I think that's generated a fair amount of buzz. Uh, I saw a lot of views on that also. So that's uh, definitely something that people are resonating with. So thanks for doing that, Victor. Um, I think uh, so the AWS folks, and I think actually so, some of you all might be on the call today too, uh, if I'm not mistaking, mistaken. Yeah, I, I'm here. Yes, awesome. It's good to see you all. Um, do, hey, yeah, do you want do you want to talk a little bit about the AWS blueprints uh, since you're here? Uh, yeah, sure. So, uh, so um, the open source team at AWS. Um, I'm one of the uh, team members there. Uh, we decided to create this uh, blueprints for our customers to use uh, for uh, cross plane templates essentially. So these uh, templates, uh, you know, help our customers um, set, you know. Um, Playing like you know, implementing uh, cross playing in their own environments. Um, but yeah, hopefully, um, you'll get more uh, traction um, as it goes on. Yeah, awesome, and I think this is a great example too of um, you know the of of a cloud provider that has you know kind of uh, given some best practices and you know good like solid ways of implementing uh, compositions and provisioning infrastructure and resources within the cloud provider. So I'm, I'm really excited that you guys did this uh, and it's it's pretty good, pretty well put together too. So very excited to see that. I'm gonna drop a link uh, to the repo itself also in addition to the blog post. So we have that here too. There we go. And great work. Um, awesome. And then uh, I think then Victor was on another podcast as well um, about, uh, about GitOps and infrastructure and cross-plane. Um, so Victor continues to stay busy and <laughs> continues to be talking about cool stuff for the community. All right. Uh, so then, so I wanted to go ahead and uh, surface up for visibility here that uh, the steering committee uh, has, has put together a, um, 
uh, a, a well a, a first attempt here at a well defined project charter. I think some of what the cross plane project is about, what's in scope, what's not, uh, all that stuff has been uh, maybe maybe expressed uh, uh, in multiple places, and then also maybe sometimes it's been a little implicit instead of explicit. So now this is an attempt here by the steering committee to put that all into one single clear place. Uh, so the charter and scope of the project is, is non-ambiguous. So I'm encouraged folks to take a look at this pull request. Uh, it basically adds a charter.md doc document to the main crossplane crossplane repo. So feel free to take a look at this. I know there's been a bunch of discussion already on it. There's already 27 comments on it. So. Um, yeah, feel free to take a look at it uh, and, and voice your concerns or, or questions to get more clarity here as we're being very crisp about the boundaries and scope of the, the crossplane project. Link is available in the agenda document here. All right, uh, cool. Then, uh, Sergey, I'll go ahead and turn the floor over to you to get us updated on uh, custom compositions work. And is, is Nick here also, or just you on, on it, I think, maybe? Yeah. So uh, yeah, so Sergey, uh, go ahead and give us a quick update on custom composition work. Yes, thank you, Jared. Actually, uh, it, actually we synced with Nick uh, in, in this weekend. Uh, we announced also the updates in the channel, and also I want again to say that. Uh, we picked up the CH root based approach to run the exam functions. As you know, we had uh, two approaches for uh, this point, and one of them is the cron job based, and the another one is the CH root based. And uh, we compared the advantages and disadvantages and pro and cons point, and we uh, decided to uh, implement the CH root based approach. And I added two comments uh, here uh, about our the ideas and the decision points uh, and the details are uh, in this uh, two comments and also Nick has a branch for uh, the uh, implementation it's on the way actually it's not completed however uh, it uh, covers the general architecture and also the uh, actually the general points of the implementation however as I said that it's on the way uh, and the second point is that I start to work on the Helm-based uh, example exam function. The, the our uh, goal uh, about the uh, alpha version of the custom composition for the cross-plane 1.8. Uh, the one of them is the implementing uh, implementing one or two example exam functions uh, for uh, testing to using and something like that. So actually the hand-based one is a good uh, candidate for this, uh, according to the uh, community requests. And also, uh, you know, the Helm is a, a very important tool for us. So uh, I, I start to work on this one. And uh, the last one is that the last update from my side about the custom proposition is that uh, Nick uh, pushed the design, design doc update. Uh, and it has more detail about the architecture now. Uh, it it also it, it is not also completed for now. However, uh, we hope that uh, it will be uh, it will be completed in a few days. So yes, these are the custom these are the updates from the custom composition side. Uh, awesome, Sergey. Thanks for sharing that. And so, do you do you and Nick have a good sense of how you're feeling about uh, you know a an alpha an early alpha implementation being included in 1.8? Uh, do you think there's a much risk to that, or do you, are you feeling good about it? Uh, yeah, actually, we feel good about this. We, we also talked uh, this point with Nick, and uh, we are in the same page actually for now. And uh, so, yes, this is the our first priority for the uh, releasing the alpha version in the crew. Plane 1.8. Awesome. Great. That's great to hear. Good good work for both y'all on that. Thank cool. you. Okay. Uh, then KubeCon EU uh, in Valencia is coming up soon. I've uh, been thinking with a number of you folks that have talks there. Um, and it looks like progress is being made. And there's a lot of, lot of cool stuff that uh, the entire community will be talking about um, on stage there in KubeCon in, in Valencia. Um, I, I think the only uh, thing to reinforce here is that we do still have availability 
for folks to join in on the virtual office hours session. If you're not able to make it to Valencia, that's a fantastic opportunity to still be included. And uh, there's speaking opportunities if you want to present to, to attendees on that session. Uh, and there are also opportunities to help out with the Q&A uh, because typically over the last couple of years when we've been doing these virtual hour, office hours, there's you know more than 100 folks that join and they have a lot of questions too. So keeping up with Q&A is actually quite challenging uh, for if you were to do it by one person. <laughs> so uh, a small team of folks to be able to help out and answer questions um, and speak or present if you want to as well, uh, is it, those are available. So reach out to me and let me know if you wanna be involved in that. Okay, and then, uh, Yes, and then there was another uh, addition to the uh, agenda item here about um, RDS support for Postgres 9.6 uh, being gone soon, deprecated soon. And so I believe uh, that this has been fixed in the upstream uh, crossplane.io documentation now. And so we will need to follow up and include that in the downstream distributions as well, essentially. So I believe that uh, that work is, is ongoing to get those docs updated as well. Uh, and thank you for, um, for opening an issue and, and adding that here to the agenda. So I believe that should be addressed soon. All right, and then, uh, so Jesse, I see you on the call now. Uh, and when Dan uh, had to take off earlier in the call, uh, he, sp he spoke to this uh, real quick. Oh, were you okay. Were you actually there when Dan mentioned that or had you- No, I, I missed that part. My apologies, I had to- Oh, no problem at all. He ran over. Um, I, I imagine, you know, he was able to uh, uh, give a, a good recap. One thing to note is that I did, um, I mean, I don't know if he mentioned this, because you probably wouldn't have known. So I did uh, join the six store community meeting this week and they gave me some some tips on on how to explore uh, you know the implementation. I'm, I'm interested in and I can speak to Dan about this uh, async, but I'm interested in, in what the crossplane communities take on this particular feature is how do you go about introducing a new feature like this and you know is this, a isolated enough use case or a, a specific spe specific enough scope that we don't have to go through major exploration here that we can actually just go straight to implementation or do we actually need to step back and kind of you know think about it in a, in a broader sense yeah very, very good question jesse uh, and so Dan spoke to some of that, but not all of it. So these are okay. still relevant things to talk through right now. Uh, so in general, um, I think that uh, we like, we tend to err on the side of, uh, you know, proposals and design or one pagers, uh, at least to kind of get uh, an opportunity for interested folks to weigh in and provide some of their feedback and, you know, uh, maybe features they would want to see in it or, you know, opinions on architecture, et cetera. So typically we do, uh, we do one pagers for things that are you know still you know small it's a medium medium scope and above uh so this one does strike me as as a, probably a good candidate for a one pager to just get the the some of the things out in the open and to be able to uh, converge on them dan also mentioned that he was actually interested in starting up uh, a little mini uh, sig like a little special interest group for this topic as a whole yeah. also so yeah. um yeah so that could be part of that uh sig maybe an artifact from that sig right. being a collaborative effort to drive yeah. a little uh, a write up on this to get some consensus and then do the implementation as well yeah i, I mean I, I think that that's that's best there there's definitely some open questions that i have and i can i can sync up with him about that thank you yeah awesome jesse i yeah, definitely appreciate uh some of the ideas you're bringing to the community now um and it's been very helpful um so yeah this is great and i'm excited to see what the what the sig uh, can can come up with cool there. thanks sweet yep so yeah so yeah just sync up with dan and you guys can drive that and that, that should be great all right uh, so that was the end of the written agenda here. Uh, do folks have things that they want to bring up now that were through the, the um, on paper agenda? Okay, last chance. 
Okay, then uh, we'll continue uh, pushing forward to uh, Crossman 1.8, uh, working on the features in uh, part of the, the, you know, follow along with progress on the project board. Releases May 17th, uh, that's Tuesday of uh, when KubeCon starts. And, um, you know, thanks again to everybody who's uh, contributing to uh, getting us to this milestone here of, uh, you know, 5,000 Slack members and GitHub stars and a whole lot of awesome stuff going on. Uh, so yeah, thanks for everybody for joining and uh, we'll see you all uh, async until the next one. Thanks everyone. Take care guys. See y'all. Cool. Cheers. See you all, bye.